starting the webinar. You're welcome. If you're just popping into the webinar, I'm going to wait a few more moments for some other folks to get here and then explain a little bit about the process and we will get started here shortly. Okay, welcome to the virtual college fair Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling. Uh, thank you for being here. These are so incredibly important so that you can get to know these different universities, colleges, and institutions to make a decision that is right for you. And you're going to hear from these experts that are going to tell you about uh, uh, their university or college. And if you would like to ask a question, the best way to do that is the Q&A button. Uh, it's either at the bottom or the top of your screen. You'll see a little Q&A button. They cannot see you and they cannot hear you. So the Q&A button is extremely important. If you would like to ask one of the institutions a question or all of them, click that button, type in a question, and they can answer throughout this 45-minute session. I'll put all of this information into the chat as well as a reminder. Again, they cannot see you. Your microphone is off. Your camera is off. So to ask a question, use that Q&A. Uh, there are going to be future sessions. Uh, we always have them at strivescan.com. So check that out. And a recording of this session and the chat will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Ohio. And with that, we will get kicked off with Alfred University. Good evening. It's great to be here and welcome to Saxon Country. My name is Barb Condrate and I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admission at Alfred University. And I'm gonna walk you through a general overview of some of the amazing opportunities that we have at Alfred University. We've been around for quite a while. We were founded in 1836 and we're the second oldest co-ed institution in the country. We were inclusive from the start, welcoming international students, students of color, and indigenous students well before many other schools in the country. We're located in the beautiful Southern Tier region of Western New York. The village of Alfred is in a picturesque rural setting and is unique being home to two colleges, Alfred University and a predominantly two-year school, SUNY Alfred. If you've never been to our neck of the woods, here's a map of the campus. We have about 232 acres and you can easily walk from one end of campus to the other in about 10 minutes, depending on how fast you walk. If you know what you'd like to study, that's great. But if not, please don't worry. One of the many reasons for attending college is to figure out what your passions are, explore different avenues for possible careers. Our campus has a community feel of only about 1800 students. Our average class size is 18, and we have a 13 to 1 ratio of students to faculty. From our career, our center, excuse me, for academic success, which has tutoring services and individualized educational plans for students' um, achievement, to also our career development center, which will help you find internships and jobs. You'll definitely leave Alfred University with the skills to make an impact on the world. But of course, it starts with academics. So I'd like to look at the four academic units with you. In the School of Art and Design, which is rated one of the top 10 art schools in the United States, you'll create without constraint in a supportive multidisciplinary environment that encourages creativity, research, and travel. You won't major in a particular medium as your BFA will be comprehensive. You work in an interdisciplinary curriculum that allows you to explore all the mediums that we have to offer. You'll leave Alfred a creative, innovative maker who's adaptable to all facets of the art world. The Performing Arts Division houses two majors and several minors. Our facilities are spectacular and it's a must see if you come to visit campus. Our nationally ranked School of Engineering 
and honors majors, and they're listed here. And as you can see, we have really unique programs. You can start out as an undeclared engineering, engineering major your first year and consider them all. It's hands-on learning from the very beginning at Alfred. We have over 80,000 square feet of lab space where students get to learn, create, and explore their passions. You'll interact with world-renowned professors in small classrooms right from the start. The College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is our largest of the four colleges and schools with the most academic options and students enrolled. Students can study in over 60 majors and minors and have opportunities for research, hands-on learning, and travel. Also, this college is proud to have an active Phi Beta Kappa chapter and an absolutely fantastic honors program, which is open to all of our students at Alfred University. The College of Business offers numerous majors and minors, and we even have a four plus one business administration program um, that many of our students throughout the whole university take advantage of. Our business students are launching businesses from campus, working with local, national, and international companies on projects and internships, and they travel around the globe to enrich their classroom experiences. The College of Business proudly holds the AACSB accreditation. That's an honor fewer than 5% of business schools and colleges in the world. Now let's see what happens outside the classroom because that's important as well. No matter what college you choose, the college experience is what you make of it. Our students are involved in a community, the, both the community of Alfred University and Alfred, New York. We have over 80 student-led clubs and organizations. We offer 22 Division III varsity teams along with club and intramural options. You definitely won't be bored at Alfred. Alfred is a residential college. Um, living in a residence hall is part of your whole experience, just like going to class. You meet new people, encounter new ideas, overcome differences, and develop long-lasting friendships. There are all types of residential options for you to fulfill your three-year residency requirement. Our dining options, we have a full service all you can eat style to grab and go throughout the community. There's lots of options on campus along with restaurants in our area. And we even offer cooking classes through our community table, which is located in our campus center. Now I just wanna quickly go over the application process. You can apply to Alfred University through the Common App, our application or the Coalition App, all are free. Early decision is December 1st, regular decision. Our preferred deadline is February 1st. For the next few years, all we need is your high school transcript, a letter of recommendation and essay. We are test optional for the next three years. If you apply to our School of Art and Design, we also require a portfolio of 15 to 20 pieces of your work. Financial aid, we are definitely committed to making Alfred University affordable to our students. 98% of Alfred University students receive financial aid. We just need the FAFSA. We're very, very generous with merit scholarships and your whole financial aid package will be made up of that, your scholarships, grants, and loans. We tend to be much heavier on grants and scholarships, which you do not pay back versus loans and very competitive with out-of-state schools, including state schools. So I'd love you to come to campus. We're in session, we have been through the whole year. We're so fortunate, our students have taken care of us and um, we'd love you to come. You can come to campus now um, and visit us and we'd love to have you do that. So thank you for letting me share with you Alfred University's Out of Ordinary Experience. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Rochester Institute of Technology. Thank you, Christy. Are you seeing my screen? I'm sorry. Um, I see part of your screen and that. There you go. Okay, how's that? Yep, good. Well, thank you so much for um, being here this evening. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about RIT and the unique experiences that we offer. We are located, the Rochester Institute, Institute of Technology is located in Western upstate New York. We're um, in the Rochester area, about 15 minutes from downtown in one of the Western suburbs called Henrietta. 
We're a large university with nearly 19,000 students on all four of our campuses and nearly 17,000 of those students are with us right in Rochester. Primarily an undergraduate university, almost 14,000 of our students are undergraduates, but we do have about 2,500 or so graduate students. We host students from 50 different countries or 50 different states and 90 different countries. We're a large university with a very small fee college feel with a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one and the average class size is 22. We are the proud um, holder of one of our nine colleges, the National Technical Institute of the Deaf. It's our flagship at the university and it is home to nearly 1000 deaf and hard of hearing students. There are two federally funded universities for deaf and hard of hearing students in the country. Godelette University in the DC area is a traditional four year liberal arts school and RIT is the technical university that the federal government chose back in the 1960s to be um, the designated technical university for the deaf and hard of hearing. We offer in our nine different colleges more than 90 degree programs and over 100 minors. And again, those nine colleges give the university a very small college feel. There are over 40 degrees in the it offered in accelerated dual degrees where you can get a bachelor's and master's degree in about five years. But our niche programs are what really makes RAT unique and stand out from museum studies to imaging science, medical illustration, packaging science, is one of four in the United States. We do offer, of course, a bachelor's degree in American Sign Language, mechatronics and ceramics, metals and jewelry design, furniture design, human-centered computing. We have two direct entry programs for um, med school and law school, and we have an ultrasound and technology and PA program as well. We're only one of nine national universities recognized by US News and World Report for co-op internships and graduate and undergraduate research. The co-op program is really the um, flagship of the University of our experiential learning. We are the fourth oldest program in the country. We were founded in 1912, so we've been doing co-op for a very long time. Our first co-op students actually went to work at Bosch and Loam back in 1912. And we now host over 3,400 employers that come to campus on a regular basis. 4,500 students go out on an annual basis. Most of our students do some form of experiential learning and all of our academic programs in engineering, engineering technology, computing and business require students to do co-op as a part of their academic requirement. When you're on an academic co-op that is a part of your degree requirement, it is full-time paid work. It is not part-time in addition to your classes. And when you're on co-op, you do not pay tuition. So it makes it a really great way to earn money to help pay your tuition when you return from co-op. The co-op program also gives us really high outcome rates. You all are about to become consumers of education, of higher education. And as you start to research and investigate, you're gonna to wanna to look at the outcome rates of the schools that you're looking at. Our overall rate in all um, nine of our colleges is 94, it's a little over 94%. In our College of Technologies or the technical schools of engineering, engineering technology, computing and business, those outcome rates are upwards of 98%. You can learn all of the outcome rates as well as average salaries um, that vary by college at joboutlook.rat.edu. You'll see many logos on the screen and that's just a very small smattering of the companies that come to RAT to hire our students on a regular basis for co-op internship and full time. As I mentioned, undergraduate research is available as early as your freshman year. It is hands-on. It's driven by you. We also have several ways for students to get um, involved in innovation and entrepreneurship with the Simon Center of Entrepreneurship or the Magic Center, and we do offer a Tiger Tank competition in the spring. The other opportunities that many RAT students take advantage of is our study abroad and global opportunities. As I mentioned, we do have other campuses besides Rochester. We have a campus in China, one in Croatia, Kosovo, and in Dubai. Students also study abroad in 55 countries and they may even do service abroad or work abroad. A great way to get your co-op requirement fulfilled is to go overseas and, and do a work abroad. We do offer, as I said, about 50 different combinations of dual degrees of uh, bachelor's and master's options in as little as five years, maybe five years in a semester, you can earn both plus do your co-op requirement. 
Our IT students are very engaged and very busy. We have over 300 active clubs and over and about 29 Greek organization. On any given year, we host over one over hundreds of um, actual events. This year, it looked very different with the pandemic, but we were open since the 19th of August. Our students are on campus. They are engaged. And we opened on campus for tours in October. And now we are in full tour mode right now. So if you would like to visit, that's an option. If you're into sports, we offer the following varsity sports. They're all played at the Division Three level with the exception of men's and women's hockey, which both play at division one level. If you don't want to be at the varsity level, but you still want to be involved, there's club recreation and our mural activities in all kinds of different areas that you'll see here. Probably the fastest growing is esports, and the one that is, is really one of the most popular is broom ball, which is played at the ice rink with a ball and a broom, if you can help understand that. So we're here to help. We'd love for you to connect with admissions we are safely welcoming families to campus seven days a week for um, two families per tour, which is about eight people. You can find that tour schedule at ret.edu slash visit. You will have a student-led tour. There's also the opportunity to do a self-guided tour if you want to walk yourself around um, campus. Our admissions officers are open for you and ready to have your conversation. And there's a full offering of other information on our website as far as application process and admissions. But since you're early in your process, I will leave that to you to ask me a question if you have any kinds of questions. And I'm that's about all I have for tonight. And I'll put my contact information right in the chat. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, next up we have Syracuse University. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike McGrath. I am an assistant director at Syracuse University. I'm also joined in the back end by my colleague, Jennifer Isif, uh, who's associate director at Syracuse. Uh, we both represent the great state of Ohio. Uh, if you're in the greater Cleveland area, Jennifer is going to be your point of contact. All points west, I will be uh, excited to be able to tell you more about Syracuse, not just a place uh, that we both work at, but have both attended. Uh, Syracuse uh, is located uh, in the heart of New York State, uh, in the city of Syracuse. Uh, we are in an urban environment, but we have a residential campus. Uh, and so we allow you to have that traditional college feel uh, while still being within a city. Uh, as you can tell from this uh, image, uh, we are a quite beautiful campus, uh, often ranked one of the most beautiful in the United States. Uh, in all four seasons, it's really a fantastic place to be. Uh, one thing you'll notice, especially in the fall, uh, is that the color orange uh, is pretty prominent, uh, but that's everywhere. Um, actually, yesterday was Orange Day, if you weren't aware. Uh, and uh, one thing to note about uh, being orange is it's more than just a color, uh, it's a way of life. Um, we celebrated our 150th, 151st anniversary yesterday, uh, and 150 years of orange uh, is really something we're passionate about. We have over uh, 15,000 undergraduate students who are bold, passionate, and committed um, to our campus, our city, and the community. And those 15,000 undergraduate students are coming from all 50 states and over 170 countries worldwide. You get the chance to meet people who are coming from diverse backgrounds and areas of the globe. Um, we are centrally located in the Northeast, which means within four and a half hours, you can travel to four of the largest cities uh, in the Northeast, Boston, New York City, Toronto, and Philadelphia. Um, Niagara Falls is close by, so a lot to do uh, within the area, but also within the city of Syracuse in central New York as well. Those 15,000 undergraduate students are spread across 10 schools and colleges. Uh, the core of our university is the College of Arts and Sciences and the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, with eight professional schools surrounding it. You'll have a strong foundation in the liberal arts at Syracuse, with the ability to take coursework in top-ranked programs in communications, engineering, design, theater, business, sport management, uh, the list goes on. We actually have over 200 majors available to you at Syracuse and over 100 minors, which really allows you to customize your education based off of your interests. Uh, one thing to note um, is if you are not sure of where you want to go, where you want to start, uh, we do have six undecided programs uh, in our schools and colleges, which allow you to have that flexibility of really figuring it out what it is you want to study to really discover your interests. 
Speaking of flexibility, uh, maybe you have multiple interests. Syracuse allows you to be able to double major, to have multiple minors, to even be duly enrolled across schools and colleges, allowing you to really focus on what it is you want to do. I like to quote Hannah Montana when it comes to Syracuse saying that we are the best of both worlds. Uh, we have all of the benefits of a large private research university with those small schools and colleges that allow you to have an average class size of 26 students. Uh, our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one, which really means you'll get to know your professors and your classmates. You have a team of academic advisors working with you all four years at Syracuse, making sure you're on path to graduate to figure out how to add a minor, how to really make sure that your academic goals are being met. Additionally, you'll have peer advisors uh, who are an upperclassmen sort of serving as that guide along the way, telling you only the insider information a student can. But what I think is really truly tremendous about our counseling is our career centers. Each of those 10 schools and colleges have their own career center, helping students best succeed within their future. Uh, they're helping you build a resume and a cover letter that's related to what program you're looking to focus in once you graduate, what job you're looking to get. Um, they're helping our students find opportunities by bringing companies to campus and career fairs. Um, during the pandemic, they were meeting with them virtually, uh, really making sure that every student had the right access to be able to find their future. Our students have done some really tremendous internships as part of their time at Syracuse. They worked with a wide range of companies like JP Morgan Chase, SpaceX, the Walt Disney Company, NBC Universal, the CDC, JP Morgan, uh, CNY Arts, uh, lots of places that our students have been able to work with in Syracuse, New York, uh, and in the greater world. One thing to note uh, is that we really want you to explore outside of the classroom at Syracuse, um, really put theory into practice. And so that means that research is a foundation of our campus. Uh, as our R1 Research University, uh, we really want to help every student have the opportunity to engage with research, no matter the program, uh, so much so that we created the source, the Syracuse Office of Undergraduate Research and Creative Engagement, set up with over a million dollars of funding to help students not only find opportunities to do research, but to get paid for it, to receive funding for it, to make their realities come to fruition. Um, one thing that we encourage students to do is really think outside the box. Maybe you want to start a company, even if you're not an entrepreneurship major, you can do so through the Blackstone Launchpad. These experiential learning programs really help add an additional step to your studies here at Syracuse. Maybe you're ready to explore the world. Uh, Syracuse has five centers worldwide in London, Florence, Italy, Madrid, Spain, Santiago, Chile, and Strasbourg, France that are owned and operated by us. We also work with 60 world partners to bring you to additional countries and have centers in the United States itself in Los Angeles, New York City, and Washington, DC that allow you to have a global experience as part of your time at Syracuse. It's not just about education though. We know you really wanna enjoy your student life. Uh, we have over 300 clubs and organizations for you to be involved with. Whatever it is you like to do now, you can continue to do at Syracuse. If you like to write, why not write for the Daily Orange, the number one co uh, campus newspaper in the country? Uh, maybe you like to play basketball. Uh, you might be playing at the division one level uh, with March Madness coming up. That's something that we've been really excited to see Syracuse represented at. But we also have club and intramural teams as well. If there's not a club that exists, you can start one, really allowing you to have your voice be heard on campus. We wanna make sure that your health and wellness is a priority. Uh, and so last year we opened up the Barn Center at the Arch, uh, which is an integrated health and wellness facility that is meeting students at every step of their health journey. Uh, and so we are working with students to make sure they have access to mental health counselors, nutritionists, physical trainers, all in the same space. In addition, we really wanna make sure that you're getting the chance um, to figure out, all right, how do I join the Orange family? Uh, join the ranks of such individuals like Space Shuttle Commander Eileen Collins and President Joe Biden. Uh, we are on the common application. There are two ways for you to apply, early decision and regular decision. The early decision deadline is November 15th. Regular decision is January 1st. It is a holistic review. So we look at everything that is sent to us, not just your transcript and GPA. Uh, we are test optional for those of you who are applying for fall 2022. Interviews are available for our seniors starting in July, which is a great way for you to share more about who you are and what you're looking to do. 80% um, of our students last year received financial aid with $295 million being given in grants and scholarships. We really do strive to meet demonstrated need uh, and make sure that we're able to make this dream possible. 
Um, you're gonna have additional questions, we know. Feel free to contact myself or Jen. Uh, the information's on the screen and will be in the chat. Uh, and visit our website. We are doing virtual sessions every single day, literally Sunday through Saturday, there is a virtual session you can attend. Uh, and we hope you can discover what it means to be orange. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have Pace University. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Mummy, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions on Pace University's New York City campus. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about both of our campuses. If you didn't know, uh, Pace is a New York school with a campus in New York City and about another campus about 45 minutes outside of the city in Westchester, New York. Our New York City campus is up first on my list of things to talk about. And this is our larger of our two campuses student-wise. So our New York City campus has around 6,200 undergraduate students. On the New York City campus, we do have four different residence halls and housing is guaranteed for all four years. So if you're worried about coming to New York and finding housing, don't worry. We have that for you, your whole pace path. Our campus is also not a closed campus and we are a part of New York City, but everything is within a five block radius from our main building. So you definitely have that campus feel, even though you are located in a city because everything is right there. Most of our majors are located on both campuses, but one program that is unique to Pace New York City is our performing arts program. So if you are considering performing arts, this would have to be your main duty. We are located right by the Fulton Center subway station, so you have easy access to everywhere you need to go with the subway system. This will come in handy for your internships and also just taking advantage and exploring New York. As I touched on before, our Westchester campus is in a town called Pleasantville, located in Westchester County, New York, so about 45 minutes outside of New York City. If you're looking for a traditional college campus, this is definitely the place for you. We have a 200 acre campus and about 2,600 undergraduate students. We do also have division two athletics and they are all located on our Westchester campus. Similar to New York, most of our majors are available on both campuses, but one that's specific to Westchester is our nursing program. So if you're looking for a four year RN program, you would have to choose Westchester as your home base. There is a shuttle that runs back and forth between our campuses a few times a day. So if you're interested in staying on our New York City campus, but then going into the city for fun or for an internship, you can, and vice versa. And then also last thing about Westchester is again, housing is guaranteed up here. And we actually have five different residence halls up in Westchester. Something that is unique to both of our PACE campuses is the program that we developed called the PACE Path. So the PACE Path is going to be a customizable four-year plan to really make sure that you are taking full advantage of everything that we have to offer to make sure that when you graduate, you are career ready. That is something that we say a lot on our campus because with our position in New York City or right outside of New York City, we wanna make sure you have full advantage to everything that you need. On the academic side, so at PACE, we have over 150 different majors and combined degrees split between six different sub-schools. So with our College of Health Professions, we have nursing and we do also have health science. Our Dyson College of Arts and Sciences has everything from biology to psychology and our School of Performing Arts. We do have a law school at the graduate level. So if that is something that's of interest to you, you can do a three plus three program. Uh, our School of Business has everything from management to marketing to accounting to finance. And it does also have an AACSB accreditation. With School of Education, we have Early Childhood, Childhood and Adolescent Education. And then our School of Computer Science and Information Systems has Computer Science, Information Systems, and also Information Technology. At PACE, our average class size is about 20 students and our student to faculty ratio is about 16 to one. Also something to note is that you're not really constricted to any of these specific schools and you have the ability to double major or do a minor in another area. So when you're applying and you're picking psychology, maybe, you know, you're not locked into the Dyson College of Arts and Sciences. And we've seen students will, who will do a major in psychology, maybe do another major in uh, marketing, and they're able to kind of cross academic schools like that. Internships uh, are very important. So with our position in New York, we have one of the largest internship programs in the New York City metro area. Last year, our students completed 
uh, close to 6,000 different internships. So that is something that is definitely popular. And we recommend that students do about three to four internships during their time at Pace. I don't know if you recognize either of the backgrounds of the photos on the screen, but these are two real PACE students standing in front of two of their internships. Uh, so the top student, her name is Anne Marina. She has interned with Nickelodeon and also on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Uh, the bottom student, he interned on Saturday Night Live and he also got to intern with the FBI. So that is just, again, two of our students. And that is something that we have um, opportunities for everybody. We have internship fairs on each campus. We have career advisors to work with you every step of the way. So definitely connect with them your first semester and they'll help you get started on the internship side of things. Moving on to the financial aid side. So when you apply to the university, you will be automatically considered for a scholarship. This is based on your high school uh, achievements and your application itself but you're also able to apply for financial aid. 95% of our first year students do receive some type of aid. And on our website, we have a net price calculator as well as a merit scholarship estimator. With the application, the application itself is fairly simple. We are on the Common App and we do also have a PACE application. You can submit either or. We were test optional before the pandemic and we will remain test optional. So if you would like to submit those, you can but otherwise we just need your essay, two letters of recommendation and your high school transcript. Here are the deadlines from this past year. Uh, so we have early decision, early action one and early action two, and then we have a performing arts deadline as well as a nursing deadline. So if you are considering performing arts, uh, please check our website over the summer to make sure that these dates are the same for fall 22. But this year our uh, application deadline was December 15th and then our online pre-screen deadline was January 15th. Our nursing deadline is February 15th, and that is also a hard deadline, just a little bit later in the cycle. That is all for me. So this is my contact information. I am the counselor for the entire state. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll also put my information in the chat, but thank you. All right, fantastic, thank you. Next up, we have SUNY Portland. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maurice Kearney. I'm a senior admissions advisor here at SUNY Cortland. I am also a former Red Dragon, and I am ecstatic to be here um, tonight to give a little bit more information about what SUNY Cortland has to offer um, and then share a little bit about my experiences. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, and then we're gonna go through a brief little PowerPoint. Um, again, just giving you some a little bit more information about SUNY Cortland. One second. Okay, here we go. All right, so our mascot is the Red Dragon. So SUNY Cortland Red Dragons. Blaze is our mascot's name. Um, Blaze is phenomenal. Um, walks around campus, eats lunch with our students, and is at all of our athletic and social events all throughout the entire campus. The great thing about SUNY Cortland is that it's not too big and it's not too small. It's a medium-sized campus. Um, it allows students to have a sense of belonging on our campus. Um, it doesn't allow for you to feel like a small fish in a big pond. And we'll talk about some of the numbers here. Total enrollment is a little bit under 7,000, um, actually 6,810 students. That does include undergraduate and graduate. If you were to just take our undergraduate students, we're roughly around 6,300. We typically bring in a first year class of around a little bit over 1,200. And we do have a little bit over 600 transfers that enroll into SUNY Cortland each year. I talked about not being a small fish in a big pond. Our average classroom size is 23 and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. Our largest lecture hall on campus holds about 275 total occupancy, but it never, ever, ever reaches total. Um, your freshman year, you might be in this large lecture hall for some of your general education required liberal arts courses. And you may have students roughly around 70 to 75. Anytime your lecture hall gets that large, um, there will be teacher assistance in there as well. Um, we're, we are located, um, centrally located in the heart of New York. We are actually about 40 to 45 minutes south of Syracuse. Um, we're about 45 minutes um, north of Binghamton and about 45 minutes east of Ithaca. Um, we are very diverse when it comes to our student population and where our students are coming from. Um, 34 states and 47 different countries are represented 
on our campus. Um, we are open campus, meaning there isn't a security guard you have to go check in in order to get on our campus. But in, or, in regards to that, we also rank number one in the state of New York for campus safety. So we do have 24 seven University Police Department on our campus and they work and collaborate really, really well with the town of Cortland Police. To give you an idea, this is downtown Cortland. So we are in civilization. You can walk and get into downtown Cortland in about four to five minutes from our campus. To go over a little bit of our first year admissions criteria, what we're looking for is four years of English and social studies and three to four years of math, science, and a foreign language. To give you an idea of the GPAs of some of the students that we typically accept, the middle 50% have between an 86 and a 92 unweighted GPA. Um, we were test optional this year and we intend on being test optional moving forward. Um, but prior to the pandemic, we were looking for anywhere between 1100 and 1230 on the SAT and the ACT between the 24 and the 26. Um, just like Syracuse, we have a holistic approach, meaning that we're not gonna just look at your test scores, your high school transcript and either accept or deny. We're gonna look at everything that's submitted, all of your extracurricular involvements. We're gonna look at your patterns in academic performance, Uh oh, give me one. Your patterns of academic performance, as well as um, your extracurricular involvement and your rigorous, of course, were completed throughout um, your entire high school career. Some key dates to remember, um, we are on the common application and the SUNY application. So the common application would work best for you guys. Um, November 1st is recommended date for students that are trying to transfer into Cortland, but November 15th is our early action deadline date. So it's non-binding agreement for any student that wants to know their decision prior to January 1st, they apply to SUNY Cortland by November 15th, and we will go ahead and, and, and guarantee them their decision in December. Now, again, it's non-binding. So if you apply early action, it does not mean you have to come to SUNY Cortland. Again, we will just give you your decision a lot sooner. Other than that, we do recommend students that are interested in SUNY Cortland apply by December 1st. Where we are for cost, um, we are very, very cost efficient, especially for our students that are coming from out of state. We're around $27,785. That does include your tuition for the full year, your room and board and all fees, as well as your non-build expenses, such as books and supplies, personal spending and transportation. You're probably wondering how are we so cheap even for our out-of-state students and that's because we do award our students that are coming from out of state a $7,500 scholarship that's automatically awarded every single year. We also give out merit scholarships based on your, your high school GPA. So we start at the Dean scholarship level at a 93 unweighted GPA and our highest scholarship is the presidential which awards 4,700 per year. We also have an honors program that gives an additional $2,000 per year. And for students that are awarded a presidential scholarship and a merit scholarship, they can apply to be a part of the honors program. The great thing about Cortland is lots and lots of money has been invested in our facilities over the last 10 years. And we'll talk about just the highlight of our campus, which was built um, about five years ago as our student life center. This was a $56 million building that opened up in the fall in the spring of 2015. It opens up at 6 a.m. and it closes at midnight. Inside of it, you have your state-of-the-art workout facility. There's an indoor track that goes around the entire facility as well. There's also an all-you-can-eat dining hall. There's a game room with Xbox Ones, PS4s, Nintendo Wii's. There's also rooms for CrossFit. There's also rooms for mind, body, and, and um, yoga. There's also an indoor pool and a 40 person hot tub. So lots of things to do inside the Student Life Center. Um, on average, typically pre-COVID, we'd have about 2,500 students on a day-to-day -day basis inside this facility um, utilizing these resources. Need to know number one, strengths across 68 different majors. Um, we have a lot of different majors on our campus, over 100 minors and concentrations as well. Um, we have one of the largest teaching certification programs in the entire East Coast, but we also offer majors in the media and arts. Um, we also have pre-professional programs in pre-medicine, pre-law, pre-athletic pre training, pre-physical therapy, and pre-chiropractic. Um, we also have a phenomenal sport management program. Um, and then our students have the ability to double minor, 
double major and or added concentration. Need to know number two, Red Dragon Pride runs deep. Um, we have 25 Division Three varsity teams on our campus, about 650 Division Three student athletes, but we also have 32 intramural opportunities. So if you and your friends on campus wanted to get together and, and join the co-ed flag football league or outdoor soccer or flag football, um, basketball, um, broom ball in our ice arena, you have the opportunity to do so. We also have 36 club sports. So if you did not maybe want to play that varsity sport, but you still wanted to compete, travel, suit up, we do have those club sports that are run by our students. We do have one of the biggest little games in the entire country for Division Three. It's our Cortica Jug rivalry um, with Ithaca College, which I mentioned, which is about 40 to 45 minutes away from our campus. We actually broke the Division Three um, football attendance record in, in having this game played at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey in the fall of 2019. Need to know number three, we do value outcomes at SUNY Cortland. Um, we actually rank number one, number one in, this, in New York. And we also rank high among best public colleges in each state for getting a job in 2020. Um, career service is phenomenal. They also have, they put together a graduate outcomes report, which allows our prospective students to see where some of our students have gone um, once they left our campus. Also, 98% of our students after they leave our campus are either employed or, pro or pursuing a postgraduate degree. And then next, number four, Cortland changes lives. Um, here's a picture of myself uh, proposing to my now wife during her graduate program. Um, and you come to Cortland, you meet friends for a lifetime and, and it really changes lives and gives you really, really great experiences. If you have any questions, again, my name is Maurice Kearney. Our phone number is 607-753-4711. And then my email address is there. And I'm also going to go ahead and throw it in the chat. And then thank you. Okay, so if I could have all of the panelists uh, turn their cameras on, we will go in the exact same order that you presented. Uh, starting with Alfred University, if you could tell us what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Oh, absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. I have a teenage high school student in my household. So to me, the thing you need to remind yourself, because it's sometimes it can be very nerve wracking and you get nervous with the college search, but remember it's a two way street. We're definitely looking to make sure when you apply that it's a good fit that you're going to thrive at Alfred, but you also need to realize on your end, you need to make sure it's comfortable. Are people treating you right at the colleges in a way, that, a manner that you'd like to be treated um, when you go there? You know, if someone is making you uncomfortable, make that be a red flag for you with that institution, because you're going to be there for four years and you're going to thrive and explore many things. Okay, my advice to those of you that are, especially to you juniors is first and foremost, enjoy your junior and senior year. Your senior year is bound to be better than the year you've had this year. So enjoy next year, let that college search kind of happen. Yes, you need to be engaged in it, but I wanna make sure you have some fun. Keep your list to a minimal number of schools. Don't use the Common App to apply to 30 different schools. We all look for engagement and we want students that want to be at RIT. And we're going to check and see how many times you've engaged with us. So get a select group of schools that you really have high interest in and do your homework and research and visit those campuses. And that's my best advice. But by all means, weather through the rest of this year and have some fun. Um, I think my first piece of advice, uh, if you have a Gmail address, always check your promotions tab. Uh, things always end up there. Um, and that's something we come across all the time. Um, but on a more serious note, be open to the amount of opportunities available to you. I think sometimes uh, you can kind of have a couple ideas of what it is you might want to study. Um, I know I work a lot with students who are looking to go to medical school. They think they have to be a biology major. There is so much out there, so many pathways to get to where it is you're looking to go. Um, so be willing to do some research um, and to really discover some opportunities you might not have known that existed. I would say definitely ask questions. 
uh, fake it till you'll make it uh, works in some areas, but when we're working with all these different terms like early action, FAFSA, all of those things, you don't necessarily have to tell us right up front you don't know. We can help you if you do, but just make sure you do that research on the back end and look it up um, because finding out what the FAFSA is in the fall of your senior year is a lot better than finding it out uh, in the summer right before you're supposed to start college. So definitely do that research, ask us, and we are here to help you. And for me, um, I guess a little bit piggybacking on what Sarah said about um, trying to narrow that list down, right? Not, not to apply to a thousand different schools. Um, every school has different deadlines and due dates. If you have 10 to 15 to 20 schools on your list, you know, you might miss a deadline or a due date because everyone has so many different ones. Um, and also some things that can possibly help you narrow those lists down are the little things, right? The size of campus, um, how far away from home would you like to be? Um, they may, does a campus offer a specific club or organization that you want to be a part of your four-year experience? Um, maybe you're, you're looking to play athletics. Does that play a role in, in, in making that decision? So, you know, really take, sit down, look through all the little things that I mentioned and try to narrow that list down best way possible. Fantastic advice from all of the experts. And I always kind of chime in and say, if anything, the best thing you can do is reach out to these folks because they are there to help you and to make sure that this goes as smooth as possible. Uh, so again, thank you so much for joining us panelists. Thank you students and parents who were, able, who were able to join us. As you leave here, there is a quick four question survey that will appear makes things uh, better for us and hopefully for you. And then there's the opportunity to sign up for more sessions in the future. And a recording of this is available on our website at strivescan.com forward slash forward slash Ohio. Thank you again, panelists. Thank you again, students and parents and best of luck and have a good night. Bye. Bye.